This is a venogram. The veins are injected with dye so that the varicose veins show up. Here you see a large left varicose seal connected to a small right varicose seal by a cross-communicating collateral vein. In surgery, all of the bad veins have to be cut for the surgery to work. Surgery fails when veins like this are missed. It also fails when the man has a varicose seal on both sides, but when surgery is done on only one side. Surgery is usually done in the inguinal canal above the scrotum. Obviously, this type of surgery would fail in this man. In order to be successful, the cross-communicating vein would have to be cut between the testicles, and the veins would have to be cut above both testicles as well. Eight months after my surgery, I complained that my varicose seal was not much smaller. My surgeon said there was nothing else he could do other than cut out the testicle. He said he had never failed to cure a varicose seal. I went to another urologist who said that it takes at least a year to see if the surgery works. To understand, I went to the Mayo Clinic, which found that I definitely had a right varicose seal. And at least they admit, admitted that it was unclear by ultrasound if the blood was moving on the left side. Ultrasound is an unclear test. This is, video is uh, part one. Part two will be a table of contents for further videos. Please contact me if you have hip and back problems and your surgery for varicose seal has failed, or if you're a urology student interested in studying surgery failure. If you Google management options of varicose seal, Dr. Peter Chan, He has an excellent article explaining that clear identification of varicose seals and venous collaterals minimizes persistence and recurrence, and if missed, they will dilate postoperatively with time, leading to recurrence. And factors for success are the experience of the operator in microsurgery, which has almost 100% success rate, and also patient age severity and bilaterality of the varicose seal they have a significant effect on outcomes this is an article by Olson and Stone you can get from the New England Journal of Medicine for twenty dollars but on the first page it has an excellent diagram uh, showing the different veins uh, and how they uh, uh, go different routes and then come back together and bottleneck they did, uh, well, uh, they, this is after the war, and uh, that's why interest in this article was. And then s in civilian life, they talk about disability associated with varicose seal. And later on, it says they, they did uh, 25 men. 10 had uh, one large vein the size of a pencil, and uh, or 15 had one large vein, and 10 of them had a large vein and a smaller vein. But my surgery uh, report uh, is worse. I had three big veins uh, and uh, one the size of a pencil and one other one off of the vas. So uh, my surgery was worse than normal. And the resident doctor diagnosed grade 4 varicose cell. My surgeon said that I was in the top percentile that he had seen, yet he won't admit the possibility of failure or for, me, for microsurgery. The doctor who referred me noted an association between my hip and back problems and the varicose seal. The, the surgeon needs to recognize that uh, hip and back problems are related, and this attitude in urology needs to change. Here's a recent photo of me on a bad day, just after I woke up. But I don't have any back pain in, in this photo, because I just woke up. My left testicle doesn't hurt, but my scrotum is three times the normal size. The skin gets swollen and bunched up between my legs. I lean forward and to the left because of the varicose seal. My groin is very tight, and so is my butt. It bothers me the more I move. My back hurts, and my butt hurts if I try to walk. My scrotum gets chafed when I walk. This skin gets pinched between my legs when I stand, sit, or walk. I have to lie down in a certain way. Often I can't sleep. I was recently diagnosed with levator ani syndrome, which is not typical pelvic floor myofascial pain. My rectal surgeon said that this is often due to damage by whiplash on the spinal muscles, but I have never had any major accidents. 
He sent me to a rehab specialist who also noted peculiar physical symptoms. Surprisingly, she said, I had no tenderness of the lumbar spine. I hardly moved the lumbar spine. Most of the movement was just tilting, and I had excruciating pain of the tailbone. These two specialists attribute my myofascial muscle imbalance to spinal problems. I don't disagree, but both the doctor that referred me to the specialist and the physiotherapist they referred me to both attribute myofascial pain to varicose veins, such as the ones that women get during pregnancy. I have been telling my urologist that my muscle imbalance is due to the varicose veins in my spermatic cord, and the spermatic cord enters the body directly opposite the levator ani muscles. So if there's an imbalance on the front, there's an imbalance on the back, but what is it from? My levator ani syndrome, I say, is because of the groin. I have never had any major car accidents or back injuries. But here is a discogram. I have a bad back, but no accidents. We need Health Canada to do a study on the men who have had surgery for pain associated with varicocele and whose surgeries have failed. Did your surgeon lie to you that surgery never fails? Did your surgeon offer you a second surgery other than cutting off your testicle? Did your surgeon inform you that surgery fails if veins are missed? Does your doctor deny that varicocele is associated with back pain? What percentage of men whose surgeries have failed have missed veins that would show up on a venogram but not on an ultrasound? What percentage of these men have chronic back pain and disability? And what percentage of men who have a varicocele have chronic back pain? We can avert a lot of disability if we do this study and treat these men. The commaster muscle is irritated of the commaster muscle. Because it squeezes the varicose veins directly and because it cannot raise the testicle because of the blood between the testicle and the inguinal canal, I feel this constantly and my hips are constantly out of alignment. I believe that Olson and Stone were correct when they said that all men with varicocele have some disability if examined closely enough. Is this due to the traction pulling on the spermatic cord, the bottlenecking of the blood in the spermatic veins, pinching of the scrotum between the legs? 10% of men have varicocele, but few of these are ever diagnosed. Hit the pause button as I scroll through a rough study proposal I made. The first stage of phoning men and going through their medical records would be cheaper than a single varicocele surgery. Please help me by supporting me and asking the Winnipeg Regional Health Authority, Manitoba Health, Health Canada, my mayor, councillor, MLA, MP, and the health ministers to ensure that I get a venogram and a second surgery if necessary. Please contact me at grade 4 varicocele at outlook.com if you have had surgery for painful varicocele or if you're a medical student interested in doing a study. Please see part 2 for a table of contents. I hope to do more videos on this issue and thanks for watching. Now I'm just going to pull up the study proposal and hit the pause button if you want to record it. Here's a letter I wrote to the professor of urology at the University of Manitoba who examined me physically by hand and then said it was not a urological problem. He did no tests also. They need to do the venogram. So just hit the pause button if you want to go through this information. Again, I'm lying on my side and this is very difficult for me to do. Thanks for watching.